<laughs> I'll say it. KSI, what the f was that, bro? What the f Hold on, that, can I? Bro? That was the best performance I've ever seen. It was like, it, this is what I felt like. I went there and I was like, this is amazing. I love all the performance, but why did you have to beat that child at the end? <laughs> How long has it been since we've done a podcast? Uh, six days. There go my headphones. I don't think so. <laughs> oh, f Michael. Michael. A long time. It's been. It's been a while. Can I ask you something? Yeah. Do you think we're equipped to, to do a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Are you <laughs> kidding me right now? No. No. Okay. 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 <laughs> we. <laughs> Okay. We used to do shows like this all the time. Yeah. First 150, 200 shows were pretty much all like this. Yeah. Yeah. This kid right here. <laughs> yeah. Gone. He's toast. Toast. A, 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 a waterlogged piece of wood, petrified wood. Floating down a river. Floating down a river. Yep. Yep. Are you going to make it through the show? Yeah. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I'm here. But the lights, you know, like the, like the lights are on, but, but no nobody's home. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's me right now. I'm here. Perfect. All right. Dude, it's, I don't know how you guys do this. This is ridiculous. Professional. I've, I've, I've been practicing. I've been practicing drinking with the boys. Uh, practicing drinking. I like I like how you said that. I'm practicing. I practice drinking too. No, you're a professional. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're like in the Olympic training. Like yeah. you're, you're up there. I'm pretty good. I, uh, I can't hang, dude. I can't. Like I realized like yesterday, like… There was there was some shit going down and I was like I should probably be alert and aware of what's going on right now but I was like let's go deeper <laughs> so I just kept getting more fucked up with you guys yeah. and I realized that you guys would stay the same like when it comes to like talking and like no slurring yep. and I'm just like okay maybe I should like hang back <laughs> <laughs> Do your uh, does your lips go numb at a certain point? Yeah, 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 and dry as well. Oh my uh, god! My girlfriend told me I looked like a crackhead at <laughs> about two a.m. She, she goes, you, "Your lips are crusty. Your face is dry. You're translucent, Logan. You look like a crack. You look like Mike. You still look like." <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> welcome back to Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. It's true, Mike used to be a drug addict, but he wrote a book about his recovery, and it's very inspiring. It's called The Fifth Vital. You should check it out. We are. Hey, thanks, man. I've said this before. You are. <clears throat> We're at the tail end of a long, long, arduous bender that started in Mykonos and ended here in London. We're at True Jordy Studio. Thank you again to True Jordy uh, for allowing us to use your set. This is the nicest set we've ever been on, and one day maybe we'll upgrade our set to emulate what you've built here. But it's been it's been a long vacation. We needed a Euro trip, right? It's the end of the summer, and we've been working hard. We've been working really hard this year. And I feel like we we needed a little break. So we took a little break. It's been great. We got a lot of stories for you. And uh, a lot of stuff has, has happened in the interim that we'd like to talk about because, uh, you know. Like what? Well, <laughs> what's happened? Um, a lot of things have happened. <laughs> All right, can, I, can I be honest? Can I be honest with everyone and mostly the audience? I, I'm looking at you right now. It's like looking at a, a microwave flashing zero, zero. Like when the clock, when the power goes out, there's no time on. I threw a lob to Mike and the girl messaged me. She's like, yeah, I'm done talking to Mike. And I go, wait, why? And she goes, he texted me this in Spanish. And he just said, I eat ass. <laughs> Did you do that? Yeah, dude. It was the funniest thing. Wait. I was like, yeah, that's hilarious. And I think she like liked it. Was later she on. Spanish, Mike? No. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> do you think any of what he just said ever happened? How could he how could he make that up? I have a screenshot of it. Please pull it up, buddy, because that <laughs> never occurred ever, bro. Where are you getting these things? How do you pull that up out of nowhere? Uh your screenshot right here that says. Oh, you unsend it. Oh, you. Oh, the uh, story seems to be falling apart. So, <laughs> so you had a screenshot of it, but I unsent it, and that altered your screenshot of it. It, it went back in time. Hey, Georgie, you're gonna need to read the fifth vital soon, brother. <laughs> you keep up this behavior. No, no. Except you can't read, so we'll get you the audiobook. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I appreciate. It. Wait, if not, unless it's Mike's voice, I don't want to hear that. It is. It is your voice. Seven hours and forty-eight minutes of my voice. You know, it, my voice is bad, dude. I don't think. I don't think so. In fact. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. I've never told you this. The only reason I brought you onto the show was because I think you have a good podcast voice. Really? I think you have a good radio voice. Because it's like unique. 
it's it's rat. You can hear the cocaine in yeah, in, yeah. Your, in your esophagus. It's like Steve-O. It's like having Steve-O exactly. on your show. Exactly. Guys, like, like, <laughs> I, dude, it's because I'm always screaming. It's not, I don't even think it's the drugs, my vocal. Cords. You're you're loud. I, I sometimes yeah, have yeah, to tell you decibel level, just a couple, I've couple worked, down. I'm working on it. I'm not working on it, but I, I should work on it. Um, I think it's going to take a, a good 15 to 20 minutes to warm up today. Oh, thank God. Yeah, okay. no, no. I, I'm, 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 we'll, we're going to go. I think, I, we, I think we run the whole thing. Yeah, I've, for sure. I've realized that, so when I watch back the podcast trying to look at what we can do better, sometimes the banter in the beginning is actually the most entertaining part. For me, it's just a couple boys yeah. trying to be entertainers talking about some dumb shit. Yeah. And that's cool. and can be fun sometimes. Stop looking at me like that. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I think I might be a little drunk. Could you wake up drunk? Or yes. No? Yeah. Oh, yes. But the, the thing that gets me is that you wake up drunk after having two Casamigos margaritas. No, I drink a lot yesterday. Like I drop, I, I drink way more than I usually would. I how do like, you how do you decide now that you're an alcoholic how much you're gonna? Well, drink? so legitimately, one drink will get me very very buzzed because I don't don't I never drink growing up. Uh, two drinks will have me like oh I'm drunk. Like two solid drinks will have me drunk. I had three or four drinks, and, and that's when that the sunglasses shot. went on. The sunglasses go on. That's how I know you're, and they're not yours either. You borrow a girl's sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> it was just friends. It was Kyle. Oh, oh, okay. But I will admit, dude, having sunglasses on when you are messed up is the most confident booster because you're like, it's just the eyes. I, when people look me in the eyes when I'm like a little like drunk, yeah, it is just super intimidating. No, yeah, like that's it. bro. I walked into the O2 Arena yesterday for JJ's fight, my uh, business partner uh, and, and now friend. Um, and I had to put my sunglasses on because we had been going all day. I couldn't walk into that arena with people seeing what I actually look like. And then my mistake was I took my sunglasses off like maybe 20 minutes into the fights and started doing press. And so I'm seeing tweets now today like, yo, Logan's coked up. What's his deal? I mean, look, I was going off a little bit. I was doing some WWE type promos on the mic. Bro, I'm you, call, you call them Fousey Shart in one of the, in one of the interviews. <laughs> you <laughs> don't, Mike, Mike dared me to, uh, in, in one of the interviews, tell them that I felt like a, a log a water floating down the river. Water, and I was man. able to get it in there. Yeah. That was, you planned that? Mike dared me. I didn't actually feel like a log floating That's down the river. That's hilarious. <laughs> and I'm like an idiot in the background, which by the way, I couldn't hear a lick of what you were saying at all. I don't know. I don't know if it was like you guys, but whatever they were saying, when you're near the ring, you can't hear anything. Yo, you can't hear at all. And you know how scary that is? Because what if they're saying something that's important? Like, please leave the arena now. No, but I was, this is pretty embarrassing. I was really messed up. And I grabbed Reed and Kyle. I go, dude, dude, they're trying to <laughs> warn us of something. And I'm looking up and everybody in the stadium's like this. Yeah. They're like this. Yeah. They're like, they're like, and I'm like, what the fuck? What's happening? And they're just going like this. They're pointing <laughs> at each other. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Dude, they were trying to get on the jumbo screen. And I thought the whole time, <laughs> I thought the whole time, they were like, in my mind, when I was fucked up, they're like, George, listen, get the fuck out now. And I'm like, dude, where? Where do I go? But yeah, when I found out they needed to put on the jumbo screen. And then when they did the uh, the the flag for United States, Pledge Allegiance, like all that, we couldn't hear it last second. Yeah. And I got scared there. Like it might be because like, yeah. you know, when you're messed up, you kind of get insecure. Yeah. Just so you know, that was not the Pledge of Allegiance. That was the National, <laughs> National Anthem. anthem. They don't oh, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Just, I know. <laughs> Dude, imagine. They go, and, and everybody rise. I pledge Allegiance yeah. to the flag. Oh, I was putting my hand over my heart. <laughs> oh, anyway, so but like my, my biggest fear is like being an asshole without knowing you're an asshole. So like, Something important's happening and like I couldn't hear it. And they're like, wow, look how ignorant he is. Oh, okay. Okay. So that, that checks out. Yeah. So that was what I was going on in my head. The event yesterday was fun. Oh, dude. Uh, very fun. I'd like to talk about it. Well, there was also two events yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Arsenal soccer game. My first ever soccer football. football. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Whoa. Everyone from Europe. My first ever football match. And I, I have to say… So I was only invited there, right? Because uh, the, the Prime partnership with Arsenal, uh, which is still unbelievable. So Prime's the official uh, hydration partner of Arsenal and the logos on the field, it's on the banners, the animation plays, and we we fuel the players in their match with Prime. And it is a very <laughs> surreal feeling seeing a logo that started off as a drawing on a piece of paper lining the field of one of the most popular football clubs in Europe whoa, you know, it's getting very real. The atmosphere was amazing. The environment's crazy. We got to go on the field. We got to bring you guys. And uh, we started off there. 60,000 people. Yeah. 
Was that your first like major, major soccer game? Like going to one of their games? Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a wild experience. That was my first soccer game ever. Football. Yeah. Football game. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you know what else affected me in a, in a really positive way? And we, I guess we can call it the JJ effect, but man, we got so much love. We got so, like, the, the UK fans were so receptive of the Americans, you know, you know, putts it around their field like fucking idiots. Idiots. And they were just so sweet and kind. And I can remember a time just four or five years ago where that wasn't the case, man. We were getting <laughs> full paint cans thrown at us, yeah. right? We were getting like discs hurled. My dad got punched in the head. <laughs> and then, you know, you uh, make your enemy your friend. You do some cool things in the UK. And the tides have turned. The, you know, the momentum has shifted. And I feel, I feel blessed. I feel blessed to have, been, have uh, received so, so nicely in a country that wa once wasn't always on our side. And you know how strong the UK fans can be if they're riding for you. Extremely. We saw in a, a sold out O2 arena. KSI Mis Misfits uh, Boxing put on this event yesterday that I I'll be honest with you, I, I was not sure what to expect. It's influencer boxing, bro. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the day, yeah. it's influencer boxing. What is this gonna look like? Mm. Is it gonna be a spectacle? Is it gonna uh, lower the value of what it means to be an influencer or raise the value? And yesterday, I think I think it elevated the what influencers are trying to build with these promotions. I think it was like a mixed bag. Like you had some fights that were more <clears throat> like almost like you brought WWE to boxing, like mm. character driven. Mm -hmm. Like that Sam Hyde character is that guy's a pirate. A, oh, a leprechaun, right? Yeah, a giant leprechaun, Can, the Candyman. Yeah, bro, like like. That fight was, but but in slow motion, so in slow motion, in slow motion. That Thompson dude had one punch. He he, th the Thompson dude was the reverse you. Like like all he threw was right hand. Yeah, like it's if like, you combine like, your left jab and his right hook, you got a real. You fight. got one. You've got the next salt poppy. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like like he is, bro, he is my favorite. He's my favorite. Incredible. I tweeted Incredible, salt poppy versus bro. Jake Paul. The internet wants it. So I think I think Jake's next fight, he's announcing it this week, is against Salt Poppy. It no should. Uh, I'd watch that. No, I'm kidding. I no know who shot. it's against. It's, it's, it's against Really? Jake's when does he announce? Can you say that on the show? I don't know. That was... that was. <laughs> thanks for that, man. Appreciate it. I don't know. That was at one point um, a fight that was in your potential inventory. Yeah? You know, a lot of fights that were in my potential inventory seem to be just slipping out of my hands, out of my grasp. I was maybe thinking about fighting Andrew Tate. JJ called him out in the ring last night. We'll let him have it. I want to dive into that later, though, because I do want to talk about Ar Ar Salt Poppy still. Oh, no, Arsenal, I feel like... We, is yeah. there anything else to say? No, well, one thing I will say <clears throat> quickly is thank you to JJ once again for not only smoothing things, things over with the, the UK audience, but also giving us his suite, which was incredible, um, that had a punching bag in it Yeah. that... Our, our stupid American asses spent the majority of the game trying to beat his record, which was 740. No one was able to do it until our massive uh, security detail. He's a brick wall. He's a brick wall. Uh, he hit the bag once, and not only did he break the record, he broke the machine. The, machine the, broke. the bag detached. The metal screw uh, evaporated That's right. immediately. And so, JJ... Um, your machine's broken. We broke your machine, and we're sorry. And sorry. We should probably tell you here about that. Sorry. We went to an Arsenal game yesterday, but and we were treated by JJ. That was very nice. Sure. But what if I wanted tickets and I didn't have a friend? That well, lucky sweet. for you, Mike, I got the place. Seat Geek <sighs> is the sponsor of today's episode. We just went to a fantastic boxing event and a soccer game. And if you're trying to get to one or a music festival, major game, Seat Geek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. Seat Geek is the absolute best place to buy tickets. We got the app on our phone right here. Check it out. If we needed to buy a ticket to the uh, next KSI fight, Seat Geek would be the perfect place to do that. So it might be a good idea to start searching right now. They rate every ticket from zero to 10 to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good and red means bad. We got the hookup for you guys as well. Use the promo code LOGAN for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with the promo code LOGAN. Make sure to click the link in the description to download the app. Thank you, SeatGeek. Thanks, SeatGeek. Back to the show. So how about Saul Poppy? The kick yeah. and box. Yeah, he I'm can surprised. Box, yeah. He comes out. He's a big personality, right? That's the cool thing. What you said, it's WWE meets boxing. Yeah. Because all of these influencers are big personalities. That's how they became influencers. They're being funny online. People gravitate towards their energy. And why I actually think influencer boxing events 
are more entertaining is because these kids have more to lose. And a lot of the time, they don't know what the fuck they're doing, but they, but they know that their ego is going to take them as far as it's going to take them until they can stop with a clean right hook, right? And that's the fun. You can lose it all. You can become a meme in one second. And, yeah. they, <laughs> and we saw it. We saw it happen last night. I mean, uh, unfortunately, <clears throat> our, our boy, yeah. Tommy, yep. you know, uh, lost in a pretty vicious way to Slim. Yep. And I just, I don't know what that's like to go back to the locker room after being knocked out yeah. yet. <laughs> oh, oh, I can't wait till that's clip. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know when it's there. Uh, I knew Salt was good in the back, bro. Like the, you could see him hitting pads, bro. When he was, yeah. I was like, it's he's this, quick. It's this kid from the. It's this kid from the Philippines. I think he speaks like. I think he speaks uh, a, a little bit of English. Um, but he's just so funny, and and, uh, and 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 Slim was entertaining too during Slim's match against Tommy. He, he psychopath. He, he like he looked at me, bro. Well, he was tangled he was stopped up on the rings. He looked at me. He just like, ah, ah. and I was twice. Like, yeah, yeah, right. And after the match, he said some kind things to me. He goes, "Hey, do I have your respect now?" And what have you looked at me like? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, <see? laughs> Fuck. Well, you you. <laughs> you told me before that fight that Slim was going to be a problem for Tommy. You you knew it. How much of it comes down to experience in the ring? Everything. Do you know what I'm saying? Everything. Like not just not just natural skill, speed, training, but like, dude, you you can speak on it more than anybody. You trained every single day for KSI one. You 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 knew exactly what your game plan was. You knew exactly what you were gonna do. What what counter strikes you were gonna make. How you were gonna move around the ring. But when you got into that ring in front of those however many thousand yeah. fans, how much did that change the entire Everything. fuck? Yeah. I mean, uh, for every boxer last night whose first time it was getting in the ring, like that's horrifying. You know, if you've had experience of fighting before <clears throat> and you have natural ability, it's going to come to you a lot easier. And that's what happened with Slim. That's well, what happened with Salt. Well, I guess Tommy, with, Tommy well, had one. Tommy did have one other fight, technically. So that's so he, he had one. But Slim I, had. I think Slim's had been. Had I think Slim's multiple. been at it. Right. I don't know if he's had multiple, but I know he's like kind of been boxing for a while behind the scenes. Um, just 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 on that fight specifically, I knew that Tommy was going to come in there in peak athletic form, which he did. He was in great shape. He wasn't gassing. He had the he had yeah. the gas in the tank. Um, unfortunately, it seemed like as you got into some of those later rounds, round late round two, round three. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. I mean, stuck in three <laughs> round fights. So in the later rounds, it seemed like his he wasn't able to put a lot of that energy into those punches. His punches were 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 losing a lot of uh, yeah. uh, speed, and, yeah. and I heard he only had two weeks to train. Though is that true? No, no. no. I think I think Slim did. Yeah. I think Slim took the fight on two weeks. Yeah, because yeah, because oh, well, he was supposed to fight Blue. Tommy was supposed to fight Blue Face. Yeah, Slim Slim took the fight on two weeks, and I you know we love we love Tommy, we love Face. Yeah, yeah. And so it's that wasn't easy to see. It's a tough one for me to, to you know being really good friends with Tav and and Jordan and all those guys came out uh, for the fight, and the, the team's been with him. And after the fight ended, I mean, seeing their faces, obviously it's not the same. He got he got KO'd, and so it's not the same as the stuff that we went through. But I went up to him after, and I was like, "Listen, like, I understand this isn't the ideal outcome for you guys." They were so like, there's you could see tears in their eyes, oh, you know. Man. And I was like, "I've been through this a couple times, yeah. not in the same exact way, but to go back to that locker room after a loss or after a KO or after any kind of non-ideal outcome." It sucks, bro. And they texted me from the room and said, yo, is it always this quiet back here? Like, is it always this silent? And I said, yeah, bro. Like, that's just how it goes. And and the, and the team will, will be 50 times stronger as a result of it. You know? So that is the good news. Yeah. That is the good news about losses. And having lost many times before now and having a keen understanding of what it's like to fail at the highest fucking level repeatedly, I can relate to situations like this. I can relate to situations like Deji who we saw last night in real time, turn it all around like this. Wow. Deji, KSI's younger brother, lost three fights in a row. You have JJ, KSI, who's winning everything, right? In, in every vertical. And then his younger brother, who's already the little brother, losing repeatedly. Yeah. And last night, mm -hmm. he comes in the ring. You could tell he worked his ass off. His mindset has switched, mm -hmm. and he got his first W. I was very happy for him. 
for Deji. Andy's that just, was my favorite uh, fight of the night. Fuzzy had good. some heart, right? real so heart. Much heart. Like, so much heart. Dude. To get hit that many times and just keep pushing forward, that was sick. Yeah. And I really liked it just because you could tell both of them really wanted to be in there. Yep. Like, like they both had like something to like fight for. Because Fuzzy lost too. And, and, like and in a bad way. Training, wasn't like a, training for the fight and, and getting into athletic form has been a, a life changer for Fuzzy, bro. It turned his entire life around. You know, he's... he's I think they both won in some circumstances. A hundred percent. I think so too. I also think Fuzzy's very cool and very honest. Yeah. The first thing he said to us when he came up to us, he goes, man, hey, what did he say? He's like, he's like, Maybe I just don't have it, man. Or, yeah, he, he did say all, like, oh, he, he said, did. He, he said, did. I didn't learn last time. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> like, what he said. <laughs> he he never, he's like, I'm just not learning. Yeah. I'm just not learning. Like, maybe it's not, maybe it's not your thing, you know? It was he came kind of like defeated in heart, but I don't think he understood what we saw. I think he in his mind when we when he saw us and he was kind of down, I feel like he saw us look at him like his first fight. When this time we were, we had a lot more respect. For oh my god! Like, yeah, time. you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I don't think anybody was like, "Yeah, Fuji got his ass kicked." It was nothing like that. It was kind of like, "Damn, that fucker stayed in there." He went to war. Yeah, but mm. but it was tough too for him because I'm gonna be honest. Like there, there's always a lot of this like US UK, and they're continuing that storyline here. Like a lot of these fights were US UK fights, right? But when I tell you that Deji has been the crowd favorite. And everybody has been pulling for a Deji victory. Like, for we've been so waiting for long. This for so long. And, I, and once again, I love Fuji. That's my guy. But dude, everybody wanted to see Deji win a fucking mm -hmm. fight. Because you know that he was putting so much into the training. And he would get to the to the to game time. And he would gas out. Or he would run. You know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And to see him pull through last night. I mean, I saw him after. And he was beaming, bro. He was so... That was the happiest yeah, thing yeah, I've ever seen yeah, Deji. Yeah. He came up to us smiling ear to ear. I, I, I told him, oh, man. I was like... I was like uh, I was like, man, you should really be proud. I go, I, I know what it's like to 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 lose like on that level time and time again. And for you to pick your head up when you feel like you're at the bottom and just keep going and get that win that you thought you never could do, that's a life changer, right? Mm -hmm. Like that'll change the entire momentum of, of, of his life. Hopefully, if he lets it. But very happy, very cool to see real time. And then obviously you have JJ, KSI, the two fights in one night, which was child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> hey okay, listen wait. listen i'll say it because you're his partner and you are like you know you want to stay in switzerland uh, no i didn't i'll say it <laughs> okay Sai, what the fuck was that bro <laughs> what the fuck was hold on that, can bro? i <laughs> that was the best performance i've ever seen it was like it, this is what i felt like i went there and i was like this is amazing i love all the performance but why did you have to beat that child at the end <laughs> What did that kid he do? Was to so you? Scared. He was so scared. I've never so scared seen that. Like, he did this in the ring. <laughs> <He was> like, <laughs> bro, bro, I was standing next to a girl in the crowd and she goes, We have to stop the fight. Yeah. yeah. This this small child has they've mistaken him. <laughs> How did this child get into the ring? How I'm like, did I think he's okay. Back up. Preface. Everybody relax. S level this into, into <laughs> like solid ground. He had to find a new opponent. Alex was thought it was what, supposed to drive be around the park. Hey, kid, get in the van. <laughs> you, I got candy. Get in the van. Put the gloves on and look at me. You're a professional, okay? When people ask, you're a professional. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, and then he go, dude. I'm sorry, bro. I love, I love KSI. I love his content. I love him as a human being. But don't come at Jake Paul's fighting scores of people that he's fought, and then go take a guy from the the rec center. Okay, don't do that. Why is the guy from the YMCA fighting you? There's no, why is the guy who practiced by using Tybo clips to get ready for this fight? That guy was not ready for the fight. He was and so his, scared. Bro. Like, if you on. look like that in the ring, you're, you shouldn't be in the he, ring. He, he started taking knees and, and. Well, JJ was clobbering. JJ was trying to kill, kill that. And, okay, okay, once again, JJ had a fight, Alex Wasabi. That fight was supposed to happen. Alex Wasabi pulled out for whatever reason, concussion, concussion broke or whatever, right? JJ had to find new fighters. My guess was that he couldn't find the right fighter in, in that in little that amount of time. Window of time, three weeks, and this part is actually extremely noble, and I commend JJ for it because now, as the promoter and main event, mm -hmm. you have your back against the wall. What do you do? You're going to put on this amazing event. How can I still make history in this short amount of time? But finding a fighter who's going to sell tickets, I'll fight two, one and a half fights. <laughs> I'm not doing it, bro. What? I'm sorry. I'll no, be no, but you don't have why, to. Why wouldn't I have? The, that's what do you mean? He's the other guy was the... rubbing the back of his head for 45 minutes. What do you mean? It was four three minute rounds. 17 minutes of it, he was on the. It was, it was three three minute rounds. My head. It was just. It was three three minute rounds. I'm dyslexic. Don't go there. He, all jokes. He's making jokes out of it, but this was a curiosity we were having, and it, and it's, you know, 
so, uh, somebody came up to ask me questions after. I don't remember what outlet it was, but they were like, um, what, what do you think Jake Paul's next opponent is going to look like? And this was before we had just shared this news. And, you know, I, I, didn't, I actually didn't even know yet. But I don't think, I don't think Jake would ever take that kind of fight. Like, if his opponent, like, what would happen if his, op his opponent backed out, fight's over? Like, I'm not going to fill the spot Doug, with. Doug, I love both of these cats. For sure. Right? One's my brother, one's my friend and business partner. But Jake is on some other shit right now. Right. You just, you, there's no way, if, ands, and buts about it. He's on some other shit right now. Uh, putting on boxing events at, at at really the highest level, getting respect from the boxing industry and challenging himself with opponents that every single one of Jake's opponents at the time he's fighting them has a chance to win. It looks like, it doesn't look like Jake's always going to win, right? Right. KSI had one op, one real option yesterday. Otherwise, it would have been an L for him. But and we, it was to knock both people out, right? And he did. I argued that the pressure was on him. Because he re remember, guys, he he sandwiched the, the card. He, he opened it with a fight, knocked the guy out. Closed with a fight, knocked the guy out. In my head, that was the only possible oh, outcome okay. that could have happened that made it a win for him, which which it I, did. I think he won regardless because at the end of the day, it's entertainment, and I was entertained the Th whole throughout. Time. Throughout that's yeah. that's it why it's yeah, a win. Yeah. The it entire card was phenomenally K entertaining. K KSI might have beat a child yesterday, <laughs> but it was the greatest <laughs> show of boxing out of your all your shows, out of yeah. all of Jake Paul's shows. It was it, a great night. It was it was fun, dude. I think everybody wanted to see a pro boxer beat up. A kid at one point. Because here's the <laughs> thing. Stop, here's, stop, the stop, stop, stop. here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. What made you think he's like a kid? No, nah, nah. He could have been 20. No, nah, I saw it in his eyes. He was like, he was like, I've seen, like, my father beat me. So I know what it feels like oh, when a kid oh looks my, at an adult. Oh my God. And just like, he was winced. He was wincing. He was that's, wincing. That's, that's but, the word. But yeah. maybe KSI is just so fucking He is, now. he is. That's, it could have been like, you know, his final form, bro. Like, what if he just got there and that guy was a pro, but he couldn't even fuck. What if, what if, what if that would have been Jake Paul, bro? Or Or Canelo. Or Canelo. And then yeah. Canelo's just looking at him like, no, JJ, please. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, <laughs> JJ's just become the fucking <laughs> super side. Regardless, there's a I, chance. If I would go back in time, I wouldn't change one fucking thing. I wouldn't change one no, thing. It was incredible. I loved it. It was incredible. Also, keep in mind, outside of the Alex Wasabi pullout, J, uh, JJ said multiple times, like, this fight is for me to knock the rust off. I haven't fought in. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. He knocked the rust off with a. That, uh, that that wasn't old enough to have rust on it. <laughs> not to knock the dude, dude, not to knock the rust off new, him. It had the tag still on it. What do, you mean? <laughs> what do you mean the rust, bro? There was no rust. It had WE40 all over it, bro. <laughs> there was no rust in it. How how is that kid a professional boxer? He's not. No, he's not. He's not a professional <laughs> boxer. What are you talking about, bro? I was fucked up, and if I got in the ring, I would have fucking gave it a better wing at it. <laughs> dude it's like that's a like i can't believe it bro i like, felt bad i actually i actually did like i was sitting there i think everyone just, did yeah i think everyone did <laughs> i didn't feel bad i was enjoying it that's what you guys have to draw the line i enjoyed every minute of it have you ever watched the olympics in a race and they're all close together yep. in my mind they should put somebody who's an average runner so you could see the fucking difference i saw the difference oh like, dish, 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 and then now like dish, ah! Ow, back it up. <laughs> wow. like, the guy went down. I was like, oh my God, JJ, keep going. You have five more minutes. Yeah. Keep beating his ass. Kick him while he's down. That's what I do. Yeah, right. When they're on the ground, don't let up. Press. Anyways, so uh No, I, I, I was like, I'm liking this. <laughs> Me too. Because he's on, he's on today. I know I like I'm, it. A, I'm a little low energy, like I said, after all this travel. But um, but the other thing is the event went extremely well. It was run well. It seemed like there wasn't a lot. It, it feels like the the influencer boxing community is starting to iron out a lot of the kinks in the program, in the televis the televising of the event, the purchasing. Like it seems like on the business side, which is obviously something that you and Jake and and uh, KSI are like innately involved in, it seems like things are starting to run more smoothly. Like the event last night went off pretty, pretty well. For yeah. sure. For sure. And it also, it, I mean, you know, who you partner with is a big deal. Right. JJ partnered with DAZN. Yeah. A very reputable, well-oiled machine. DAZN does a great job with their events and this was, you know, a great event. And the only thing they don't do is check IDs on the fighters, unfortunately. To see if they're even fighters. No, to see if they're even 16. <laughs> oh, now you're making the child abuse <laughs> jokes, huh? Mike, enough, bro. You're rubbing, you're rubbing off. You're rubbing off on Mike. Don't do that. Does anyone know how JJ is feeling? 
I told him. Probably I, like a winner, bro. Dude, listen, here's the dude. At one point, I got goosebumps for him. I like closed my eyes and I was like, I want to be JJ. Bro, he came out. They're blasting his music. His fans are singing his own lyrics. He's walking around. Oh, oh, He's oh! Doing push. I, I had this thought. Bro. I had this thought. They play. So they played his music. Yeah. In between the rounds. Right. Yeah. Is that yeah. fair for the opponent? <laughs> The whole, the whole crowd it's his is event. singing it's his, his music. Event. It's his event, bro. This is his world. We're all spectators. Yeah, facts. It was, it was, I felt like an extra. I was like, wow, I'm so blessed to be here right This now. ain't your movie today. No, 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 no. He was, the, he was doing push-ups in the ring. And I was like, if I was a girl right now, I'd be trying to sleep with him. 100%. I'll be by the ring. So I'd be like, JJ, afterwards. You, you don't even need to be a girl. Dog, you don't even need to be a girl. Yeah, you can, can still guy. give it a shot. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> JJ, <laughs> wrap up that kid and let's go. <laughs> so the other big question they asked me at the end of the night too was, uh, and I'm sure they were asking you, is like, Tonight, KSI and Jake Paul fight. What happens? What happens in the event that these two walked into a ring right now at their current uh, uh, skill levels, their current physical fitness, get in the ring and fight each other? And I, I, you, you were trying to push me away from answering the question. Well, you don't, you don't play I, in it very I, often. At all. I, I'm, I'm not participating but, in the But I simply said this. KSI went in the ring last night, did what he had to do. "Quote unquote," knocked the rust off. Got back in. Got back into that feeling of fighting. Um, he'll go back into camp. He'll take another fight. So on and so forth. But if you put JJ and and Jake Paul in a ring today, Jake Paul wins that fight. I, I don't know. N now, now listen. KSI is a monster. He is. He's an animal in that ring. He was back with those those fucking overhand rights last night. He 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 throws intense punches. He hits body shots. He's an incredible fighter, and he's going to be a great fighter. But but, I it, the, the thing is is that Jake doesn't do anything else. This is what I was talking to the interviewers about last night. There's no Arsenal Prime. There's no reacts. There's mm. no side mentation. No, he has that new no, show. Stop. BS that, with Jake that, Paul. That, BS with Jake Paul. That, fuck, you're throwing my whole shit off. You're right. That just started. <laughs> BS with Jake Paul. Check it out. But for the most part, the kid is locked in. Yeah. But uh, even BS with Jake Paul is a boxing related program. And by the way, I told him, I said, this this journey of podcasting in long form is a long one. And you're going to be doing this for a while. And it's going to be really hard to keep up with as you're trying to be, you know, a world champion, champion boxer. boxer. And, and I just, just want to caveat and say this. That doesn't mean that in a year or in six months or whatever, that that outcome is still the same prediction for me. You know what I'm saying? I think JJ keeps fighting. I think he takes another fight. He continues to show what he's capable of, right? Yeah, so 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 that was the interesting thing. And I saw Jake tweet this uh, because JJ didn't call K, uh, uh, Jake out. Right. He called Tate out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, was, I, was, I wasn't sure what route he was going to go, but it looks like he wants to, Do I guess, oil up his machine a little more, get some more experience under his belt, belts, before he fights Jake, which, which, which... Makes sense. I, I don't mind. Me, and, me neither. I, I just wonder what the everybody wants to see that. that yeah, yeah, yeah. But but we know it's inevitable, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like like we have to create and craft a beautiful storyline that hooks people in from start to finish, and we can continue doing that. There's no reason to make it happen now. I'm glad him and him and Jake didn't no, fight man. on this card, yeah, yeah. right? Like that was that was a, a a conversation for one second. He called out Andrew Tate at the end, which 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 by the way. Do you want to? Should we dive into the the Tate stuff? I think I think it's a good. I want to yeah. just chime in on the Jake. Yeah, 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 uh, KSI. Yeah, yeah. Just real quick before you yeah, get into the no, uh, Andrew Tate. Uh, I think uh, I think that still would be a good fight because Jake. We've seen where he goes with it, but we still haven't been able to see where KSI could take it. Regardless of what he did yesterday, bro, he was sh like I. He could have gone and done four of those fights over again. Like he was ready and he was in shape. And we didn't, we, shape. the guy wasn't able to push him to the point where he was even threatened. So there might be a chance that he's hiding in his arsenal something that we don't even know about. Do you get what I'm saying? We know what he's sense. hiding in his arsenal because he's he showed it even earlier on with Logan. I mean, I mean, the kid can actually fight, is a real, real, real contender. Like, I, I mean, if you're not putting I feel like, JJ I feel like and Jake at, at one two in the space. I mean, are you are is that a is that a fair assessment? Yeah, for oh for sure. Right. Yeah, like yeah. and, 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 it's, for and sure. it's just a matter of just where you're putting one too. And I I I specifically say today I have my thoughts, but for I'm sure. interested to see where that goes in six months to a year. So here's where this gets really fucking interesting. I still think hands down, I'm the best internet centric boxer. 
Yeah, you got this, man. Yeah, we agree. <laughs> Listen, just put a couple kids in the ring. <laughs> play your music. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 I'm really hungry to get back in the ring, right? I'm seeing yeah. my comrades do it. And by the way, if I didn't think I was the best, I don't know if I would be anything in life. Like, that's just my mindset, right? Like, I, I, you got I, me number one. In my head, at least, yeah. right? And that's where it always starts because if I don't believe it, how the fuck is anyone else going to believe Absolutely, it? Absolutely. Right? So, so uh, uh, that's what I believe. Uh, but obviously, respect to some of the greats in this particular vertical. And so, yeah, I'm hungry, dude. And I made a call-out video calling out an opponent fully. I sent it to you guys, mm. and I didn't release it. It was to Andrew Tate. The, the, you're going to keep segueing into this, and we're gonna keep, I'm going to keep cutting you off where he is. I just want to say this. I don't think your, your assessment of yourself is an unfair assessment. I just think the difference with you is y you've, you've shied away from fighting bums. It was never, it was never an option for you. You never wanted to, sh bro, you could have walked in. You were one of the first in the space outside of Weller and, and, and JJ, right? You could have walked in and said, you know what, JJ, I'm going to take a different fight first. Or after fight one with JJ, you could have gone and fought Wasabi, yeah. right? And done what a lot of other people have done and gotten four, five, six wins under your belt. You know what I'm saying? But instead you said, I'm going to fight JJ again. I'm going to fight Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? Like, like. It's a bit, your route, it the, looks the, very different. So when you make that statement it, in, in people's minds, it, it might not click prop perfectly, but the assessment could be true. Perhaps this question will help the click happen. If either Jake or JJ fights Floyd, what happens? In your head, what happens, right? I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Just think about the answer to that question. You probably know the answer, probably. Regardless, I made a call-out video. I'm, I'm hungry. I'm, I'm training for the WWE again, and um, uh, 99 Originals is coming to a close. Holy shit, we're like almost done with the project, right? The, the, the magnum opus NFT Polaroid photography project that I spent the, a year, a year now releasing, um, and it's going amazing. I, I, I think we've raised over 2,000 Ethereum and- uh, So what's that, like $52 now? It's not that low, but you know, the cri cryptos, <laughs> you know, something's going on. <laughs> something's going on. Uh, uh, but, but, but massive success. And I'm finding, so as people who follow my journey know, I go in waves on certain things. I, ch I chase certain pursuits for a little bit, then I switch and do this and that. And, and, and WWE now is becoming really real for me. I am doing so much research. I'm, I'm practicing, I'm training. And when you train to become a combat sports fighter, this changes your mentality, right? So now that I'm, I'm lifting weights, I'm sparring again, I'm, 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 I'm jump roping, I'm getting physically fit. I've cut back on the, on the, the, the smoking and the drinking besides this trip, <laughs> besides this trip. <laughs> you were insane with the last statement. Okay, okay. Almost fell out of my chair. You need to go to rehab, buddy. Are you fucking, I thought you were on like a real wave there. Okay. I'm, okay, sorry. Besides this okay, trip, sorry. besides this trip, <laughs> I woke up at one point and said, who wants to meet me at the bar? And he sent me his drink request. He was already there. Yeah. <laughs> he was already there. No, no, no. Uh, 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 Pre-SummerSlam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pre-Jump oh, locked locked off the table. Locked, locked in. in. Yeah. And that does something to your mentality is what I'm trying to say. Um, that energy, that combative energy, you know, it is a little bit of an ego inflator. So I start to get fired up. I see my brother kicking ass. I see KSI kicking ass. I'm like, oh, I want to kick some ass again. So I did. I made the call out video. Full on. Call out Andrew Tate. I know what a viral fucking video looks like. Shit would have gone viral. Except it wasn't quite me. It wasn't quite... Excuse me. That, that was. I thought that might have been... So that happens in my throat from time to time. Mm. It's become a, a huge sticking point in my relationship. And I'll, be I'll be kissing my girlfriend and I'll pull back and I won't move my mouth and you'll hear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it sounds like, it's, it's it's sounds like gas Kong. Bubbles. It's sounds like Kong back in the <laughs> <laughs> But it happens an uncomfortable amount of times. When you're like looking at each other romantically. Romantic, I, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 and so yeah, I, I made a call out video. Of the, but the issue is I've just grown up. Yep. You know what I'm yep. saying? I've yep. changed. And, and this, the way you provoke 
as a 27 year old is different than the way you provoke as a 23 year old. In the yeah. video, I was like, yo, you fucking poor compared to me. Yeah, uh, what else? I got I a Pokemon card got worth a Pokemon three year Bugatti. Two, like two year Bugatti's. Like I, I went in and I sent it to the team and it was mixed, but but we, we, we ended on don't release the video, right? Whatever, like life will fall into play as is. And uh, not too long after that. Andrew Tate got banned from the internet. From everything. Andrew Tate banned from this social media platform and then the domino effect. Now he's How do we feel about well, like that's where he's gonna go if you just give him that's where he's leading. He's got um, he's trailing us right into oh, I'm got getting it. there. Got it, got I'm it. getting there, brother. I'm holding your hand through this mountain. I appreciate it. All right. So so uh, you know, I guess I guess in a way, although I was disappointed I couldn't post this video, which which I again believe would have gotten a lot of traction. Life really worked out because now you're in a situation where, and we're going to dive into Andrew Tate. I don't feel like platforming this guy. I don't feel like giving him the blessing of being my dance partner in the ring, especially after the social media platforms have made it very clear how they feel about this guy. Right. And, and, and I would even, I would even, I would even um, put a little call out here to like fellow creators and even JJ, like, you want to replatform this guy? Anyone? You want to have him on your shows? You want to you want to give him another opportunity to speak and and and, and spread his agenda because um, whether you believe it or not, the shit that Andrew Tate is saying will have a ripple effect much more dangerous than you can imagine because his narrative is truly hateful. His rhetoric has extreme negative energy in it and it will affect impressionable young people in a way that will not show until years from now and it is dangerous so now we're going to get into the conversation of censorship right because people slippery slope freedom of speech you want to say what you want to say but you can't do that when your platform that you want to spread your word on is privately owned and money is a factor mm -hmm. the companies that Andrew Tate is spreading his speech on have a bottom line to hit. Their sole objective is to make money. Now, if you have a bad actor who's smart, who is a good orator. C cunning. Cunning. Keen. Yep. Cunning. The guy knows how to speak. His takes, some of them have merit. Yep. Absolutely. Some of them are disgusting. Yep. Absolutely. Right? So, like, say he has four good takes, and you're like, oh, I could, I see how that makes sense. One, then, is fucked up. Right? So when Andrew Tate, to the people watching his content in a entertaining way, in a way that he can lead you from thought A to thought B in a cohesive way, when he becomes your, your, your idol, your God, God, the person you look up to yep. as a creator online, because that's what kids are doing nowadays, right? You're at home. Sure, you have your parents. Sure, you have your friends. But who do you admire online? Who are you watching? Who's influencing you? Influencers. Influence. Andrew Tate had a lot of it, right? When the one take comes out that says something, women are your property. If your friend has a heart attack, you're not going to give him CPR because that's gay. If it's a dude, like there's there's a million different fucking takes that are. Wait, ridiculous. he said that. Yes, and they, and and you're right. They're they're that mixed in. They're mixed in with some takes that are motivational, that are inspirational, that do have some merit to them. The, I, we we talked about this on the show with Jake. The issue becomes. The, the, the sentiment and how the person is received is dependent on the audience member. And his audience is a very young, impressionable, unexperienced or inexperienced crowd of, of young men who, by the way, fit into a current uh, visceral uprising that exists in this world to, to overthrow some longstanding movements uh, uh, towards the further validation and, and, and credibility of women and, and other protected parties. And, you know, like, I, I, don't, I don't know that I have so much of a problem with him, you know, boosting men and making men feel, like, powerful in their, in their place. But the question just becomes, at what cost? And I, I think we, we, some of his takes have represented what that cost could, could potentially be. And, 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 and you all always have to remember, at the end of the day... Again, these these the platforms that ban him can do whatever the fuck they want. Talk about your freedom of but speech that's, all but that's you want. What he's, but that's like, what he's calling out. Okay, that's, call, calling out what though? Because 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 freedom of speech, go for it, brother. You can say whatever you want. Go in the courtyard in the mall, scream, stand on a fucking lungs. table, and Absolutely. say whatever you want. But when you are now at the mercy of, you know, um, an organization that has brought you the visibility that you so desperately seek, 
and now you want to not play by the rules, like that's just not going to work. Well, the, so so the the question there becomes, and the question that that the anti censorship side is asking is at what point does a legislative or government body step in to regulate what a private org that acts as the mouthpiece of the public can do in these situations? So that's where the question is starting to fall. Because right now, there is no legislative body that can say Twitter can ban this person, Instagram can ban this person. It, censorship is a slippery slope. Yes, I agree with that. Does there need to be a, a governing body to decide? No, there doesn't, bro. The fucking but otherwise, at Twitter but otherwise, can decide. And by the way, you know where I stand on this. I, we made a lot of jokes when this stuff was first coming up. And, and, and you guys made the jokes about me shaving my head, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And it led to you know, him following me probably and saying this guy is going to be an ally, which he now knows that I'm not. Okay, and has called me out multiple times and called me Logan Paul's boyfriend. Well, you are my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah maybe. As I'm yours. <laughs> Brother. <It's a> relationship. <laughs> uh, my thoughts are this. I, I don't like the censorship. I said this before, but after the Dana White um, conversation, this is the last time we brought up censorship, I thought about it because I watched what I said back and I was like, do I agree with what I said? And I had like this learning moment. It's like, I don't agree with what I said. I'm taking back my first thing I said on the podcast. I think the platforms have every right to do what they want. It's kind of like if you're using their vehicle, you got to respect them. You know what I mean? You got to respect their rules and regulations. It's their vehicle. Mm. Like you said, it's their platform. They put you at this. But if you kind of go in a direction, they're like, hey, man, I don't want you using my platform to take it in this direction. Pin that. That's my thought for that. But my other thing is this, the Me Too movement. When it first came out, it was sick. We were taking out sons of bitches that should have been taken out years ago. Yep, yep. But what happened after that is they used a really, this is what they did. They go, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. And then they come around from the back and then they start attacking people that they shouldn't attack. So I don't have any problem with taking out a guy that's obviously putting out hateful messages and, and, and rising up men that are like are wanting to beat or mislead women. Absolutely needs to go if that's the case. I've never watched any of his shit to, to make an assumption like that. But... My overthought is maybe we do need something with the government because these platforms are, at the end of the day, very powerful. So like if you're going to, like a gun company, right? It is America. We build guns. Or not here. Sorry, guys. But like, we build <laughs> guns. But there's also the government. There's rules, right? Like, hey, like for both sides of the party. Social media is getting to the point where it is people's careers. It's their livelihoods. And also they have like a, like a, a community that follows them and lives by them. So I'm just talking about overall general. There should be a good middleman that's like, hey, no, that's like not that bad. And no, it is that bad. And you should get rid of it. Well, well okay. I, I had this conversation with someone because where where's the line for censorship? Where do you draw your line in the sand? Is it when someone's rhetoric is leading to violence? So that's one of them. Right? <clears throat> is it when someone's rhetoric is Racism. leading to death? Yeah. It, are you allowed to be sexist and racist online because you know what kind of agenda that perpetuates? Or should we nip it in the butt before some bad shit happens? That's what I'm saying. Like, what? I mean, do what it, does it take? What does it take yeah. for one personally to go? You know what? That that person probably shouldn't be given just, a voice on a platform, right? Because because when you have again mm -hmm. a smart, articulate, entertaining orator that kind of makes sense sometimes and has a shitload of visibility and now has an army of people subscribing to his agenda, yeah. that's a, actually a dangerous agenda. And we've seen this time and time again in history where charismatic leaders with negative, dangerous uh, uh, agendas and platforms and visibility get given an opportunity to spread their word and then bad shit happens. So where's your line in the, in the sand? Do we want to let keep Andrew Tate keep doing this before his subscribers of little fucking TikTok schoolboys start doing negative bad shit to women and inspire? No, they already are. It's, it's already spawning. But, was, but, but listen, his, his rhetoric is already starting to spawn a, a full on next wave of little baby uh, 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 gimp Andrew Tate children. You can see them. They're starting to rise up. And here's the issue. They're not as well-spoken. They're not as, as uh, they don't have a few good takes. They're, they're, they're on the internet talking terrible about women, talking terrible about, about a lot of things that he probably understands at his 30, what? Six. Six, 37-year-old age point that these people just don't get. And, and they're, and they're, 
getting the same level of respect from the audience and they're starting to build audiences of their own. And so you're already starting to see the ripple effect of it. Yeah. So how, you know? so, so how bad do we want to let it get? When we know when we know where it's going to lead, you know how this ends. We've seen it. It's just, time. I, it's I, just I, weird too because it fits into a it fits into an, an ongoing wave of this type of activity. I'm telling you, I've been saying it on the show for a long time now. TikTok is is v vicious. It's a vicious community of this type of activity. You go in the audience. You got a, a a guy and a girl arguing, and the girl and the people in the audience, all dudes. I believe in equal rights and lefts. Equal rights for women and equal lefts too. You know what I'm saying? Like there's the jokes about violence towards women, uh, uh, about, you know, that type of activity are at, a, are at a, a height right now because of what I described in the last show, which was that massive pendulum swing to the left that started to support all of these rights and all of these new movements has to swing back. And this is that swinging back and you're starting to see that community and that groundswell. It's like, it's like an anti-woke. Correct. Which, 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 which I'm, all right. Yeah. Yes. Fine. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But, Let's but do it. At a, at a limit, at a limit. Because remember, that's what I'm saying. Do you have to go all yeah, the way? Yeah, exactly, bro. Like, um, I, we see this in every single vertical that goes that way. Right. Um, I'm sorry. Did, did I cut you off? By the way? No, no, no. no. Oh, I know okay. you've been waiting to say something. So oh, no, no, no. I just, just want to make sure I didn't cut you off. Here. But, uh, I just, I just want to protect the freedom of speech part. That's it. But that, again, that's protected. It, again, and, and by the way, that's protected. I don't know what the rules are in the country he lives in, but in the United States, go for it. Yeah. No, no, go that, scream I'm at the courtyard table like, at the mall. On, on the media, but that's that's the problem. That's like, it, it isn't America. It's their platform. It's YouTube. It's Instagram. So again, we don't, we can't really make, we can't, regardless of what we think, it's not our platform. We can't say what. Here, here's, here's the other thing that I want to speak on because I have a extremely keen and unrelatable understanding of what it's like to be canceled by the entire world. Why? Huh? <laughs> Just kidding. God, I thought he was serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it is interesting for me to watch someone like Andrew Tate be where he was and then get shunned and blacklisted by the platforms that he needs most. As much as he talks about being outside of the matrix, now you're outside the club and we hear you complaining that you can't get in. He had it, uh, it wasn't an apology video per se, but it was a like an hour plus long video. <laughs> I tried to not, not available <laughs> on any of the platforms, obviously. It was, like a man, it was, it was his website. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to watch it, dude, but it was like, it, when somebody starts out with like, okay, it all started when I was three. <laughs> in Chicago. That's, that's, enough, that's another God, thing. What I, I, I didn't want to so, so So I, uh, when I when I watch these apology videos or these like uh, accountability videos, let's call them, right? I watched this guy who's actually probably fucking evil try to make an accountability video. And again, as someone who's been through it and can safely say I came out on the other side, understanding, empathetic, the man doesn't understand. He does not get it. He is also not a good person. We know the type of shit he says off camera, right? As much as he says, this is a joke. I don't treat it's women like this. It's a character. No, it's not. Here, here's what I'll say. He has built a platform on this return to alpha masculine traditionalist beliefs where, uh, you know, woman at center of household, uh, cooking for the kids, cleaning, raising the kids, man at war, whatever. And he's, he's been spewing this rhetoric now for a long time. The situation, the issue is with all of that is he is not a, a traditionalist. In his own life, he has no family. He has no wife. He's 37 years old, with 36. The, with the Bugatti and he, a jet. He has made the majority of his money off of cam girls, OnlyFans management, Pyramid and scenes. casinos. Okay? The, the, the downfalls of the traditionalist male. <laughs> and so my question is, and my, my interest and my curiosity is, how can you preach a return to traditionalism and conservatism when your entire platform and your entire net worth is based on the same things that you preach against? That's my curiosity. Because that's and how my, it makes his money. No, 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 no. Tate's no. Most, his Andrew, growing, his number wreck. one ability is to understand the male and the impressionable male who, who, who is vulnerable and feels like they need something to fulfill them that he knows how to get when he's pretending it's, to be a cam girl behind the scenes, scamming them out of their now, money. Now, he's called taking me, the pharmaceutical approach. Get them sick, give them the medicine. Bingo. Correct. And he has given me, he's called me a hypocrite. Here's the thing. 
I am not, I, I've said in my book, I've said on the show a million times, I am not your role model. Take the good pieces, take the hope, take the courage, take the, the, the drive to continue going against all odds. The way he's delivered his messages have been dangerous since day one. He, need, he needs a, a torque and a full overhaul on the way he delivers his messages. Do you, know, do you know how that starts? He needs to change personally, which if everything he said about what he believes is true, he's not going to do. So as of now, my statement stands that I made in your vlog. It, by 2023, he will not have a sliver of relevancy, hopefully. And, 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 and yeah, no, fuck him. Fuck him. I'm glad he's gone. I, 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 I did not like what he was doing. I didn't think it was healthy. And uh, maybe if he would have worked a little smarter, he wouldn't have to be complaining outside of the matrix about how there is a matrix. Because what he's describing is, is just a Freemason. Right? You, yeah, you don't, yeah. don't want to play by society's rules. You don't want to live in a country that protects you. You don't want healthcare. I mean, he, he, he has money, but he, yeah. the, the, the things he's describing are an unrealistic Freemason type of life where you get water from the well in your backyard and you don't pay the your Almost electricity. Almost like an anarchist. Like, it, like, like, cool, like, hey, cool, what? bro. That's fucking cool. As you sit inside your jet and trick everyone who's subscribing to your fucking shit and making money off them. Again, yeah. that's his number one ability is to trick dumb men. Yeah. It's a trick. Impressionable, dumb, vulnerable men. Yeah. Fuck this. Also, like, we change well, the subject. Just, uh, just on, a, on a bigger topic, really quick too, besides just Tate, I don't understand, I, I said this to you yesterday, I don't understand this rush to get red-pilled. And, I, and I, we were talking about the red pill, you know, blue pill conversation and how it's become so prominent. Could you elaborate prevalent. on what that is for people yeah, that don't yeah. know? Yeah, so, so in, the, in the movie The Matrix... Uh, Neo is given the, the opportunity, the choice to take either the red pill and to discover the true meaning of, of life and, and what the matrix is and how it controls his mind or taking the blue pill and continue on living in the matrix as people know it. And, you know, it, it, over the past like couple of years, the online community or a small portion of it, by the way, the same small portion who also seems to be obsessed with a, a lot of the chauvinistic tendencies, a lot of the under the groundswell that we're seeing in that community is aligned with that red pill, blue pill community. Mm. My question is just like, for me personally, and the reason I say I don't care is because I'm not in a rush to red pill myself. I don't, I don't, the, the, a, a lot of this community right now is growing and the streamers and, and, and Tate and all these people and, and Trump and all these people are growing to fight against this liberal agenda. And I'm not saying that that's a problem. I'm not saying that we need to push back on woke and that we need to get a little bit more moderate, right? But, but woke very much was a bunch of screaming, crying, annoying people. Whiny bitches, yeah. both <laughs> men and women. And now, without even knowing it, it has spawned a conservative group of whiny fucking bitches <laughs> sitting at a fucking desk yeah. complaining about yeah. uh, shut up how Fight, weird is that slapped. get in the kitchen masculine men women have too much rights shouldn't drive wow. shut the fuck up what's the opposite of woke sleeping put me to sleep give me the blue pill and the steak i'm the guy in the <laughs> matrix eating the way the fucking the way the steak tastes that juicy steak we are we have one life we come here to enjoy it, to live this life, to build a fruitful uh, situation for ourselves, for our friends, for our family. Yes, there will be problems along the way. Yes, there will be obstacles and people that stand to try to take us down. But if you think I'm going to sit behind my fucking desk like Steven fucking Crowder for 12 hours a day and bitch endlessly about the state of things in this country, <laughs> you are mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and make no mistake at all. All of these half-assed attempts to radicalize or redesign male thinking has all of these young kids fooled, like you said, it's all clicks and views. There's no, there's no, Andrew Tate doesn't give a fuck about society. Tucker Carlson doesn't give a fuck about society. And on the other side, Don Lemon, all these guys on CNN, they don't give a shit. They're going to say whatever the fuck they want to make you watch and you click. Bingo. That's it. Bingo. That's it. So that's why... I got, want people to watch and click too, yeah. but I'd rather show you cheeseburgers. I'd rather show you me having a good time. You don't like porn stars? Don't watch it. You want to fucking scream radicalization and fix the, 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 the crying liberals and the, and the ble bleeding heart liberals. You can do it you at the mall, it. the courtyard, no. on a table, or on top we'll of your gym. We'll give you a one-up. We'll give you a one-up. Take it to Rumble. 
take it to a platform okay. that literally wait, wait, wait. allows wait, wait. you to so, do it. So this is interesting. This is really interesting. Okay, I watched a documentary on Netflix um, where, I forget the name of it. I was high, I'll be honest with you. But I remember the content. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember much when I'm high. Uh, it was a documentary, or it might have been a docu-series about a girl that accidentally dated a white supremacist and sort of like by default and I guess out of love, got sucked into this white supremacy world. And what she found was, and why a lot of these like extremely radical groups fall apart is, and, and who knows if we'll see this happen on, on Rumble, it, it is truth, uh, truth, yeah, social. truth social. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it the same thing? Are these platforms that allow you to really just say whatever you yeah, want yeah, well, and, and, and allow and, anyone to say whatever yeah, you want, right? Narc- yep, so here's what happens. When you have these, these, these people now who, who seek this ability to say and do whatever you want, and now there's certain platforms providing it, I think it's great, right? Go, go on those platforms, say whatever you want. The radical folks on those platforms vary. There's a spectrum of radicalness, right? And they don't all agree with each other. But there's people that are at the very end of the spec, uh, the, the opposite end of the spectrum that are extremely racist, extremely danger- dangerous, believe in really just foul shit that I don't, but I, that I would like to believe that humanity has grown past. Yeah, yeah. So they don't agree with each other, even though they're on the same side and they want freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah. Someone's agenda may be more dangerous and too radical for the radical person. Yeah. So then they get in tiffs and, and don't represent each other, even though they think they're on the same team and they're not. Because when you are making shit up that's solely coming out of what you believe that you may have heard from somewhere else and you're just regurgitating information, it's not always going to line up with the other person who's on who's on you're, that platform. You're describing the, po- the current state of politics in America. Oh, jeez. Literally, the left and right are at war with each other because there's radical rights, moderate rights. You know, uh, 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 um, you know, people on on the the middle, conservative, like all over the place. And same thing on the left. You've got fucking wild liberals. Yep. You've got AOCs. Yep. You've got all these people, and everybody's disagreeing, and the parties are starting to fall apart. So even even the the radicals don't agree with each other. The moderates don't agree with each other. It's a messy situation, and it's a it's a test and a learning lesson for how we behave as humans. We had to go through this same activity pr- pr- prior to social media. How do we talk to people we don't agree with? Now the question has become scaled and become a massive situation. How do pe- uh, three billion people on social media who all have intensely differing viewpoints oh my God. coexist? What a nightmare! A- 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 well, well run by organizations who have their own viewpoints yeah. with a legislative body on the side who has its own viewpoints. Yeah. And by the way, not just viewpoints, intentions, desires, greed, all of these things thrown into a bubble. And we're just sitting here as the guinea pigs yeah. of it, yeah. trying to see where it all fucking goes. <laughs> well said. It, that it, was that it, was beautiful. It, I mean, it's, You're it, right. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. It's a it's fucking insane. nightmare. And and it's really interesting that we are alive in a time period where our generation is going to have to do the figuring. We're going to have to figure some shit out. Figure it out. Do you have an answer to your question? Is Because at the end of the day, I can sit here on this podcast and say whatever the fuck I want. And some people are going to agree and some people are going to disagree. And and I believe that's supernatural. Like, don't 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 think that because we disagree. On, George and I disagree on shit all the yeah. time. And we're best fucking friends. Yeah. Don't think because we disagree, there's not some sort of common ground we can reach, even if it's just agree to disagree. So do you have a, a, anything? Because I'm planning on being the president of the United States, brother. My, my goal is to fully unite these states. So what is the answer to the question of how can we get to a place where we can have meaningful conversation that ends with some sort of positive, net positive outcome? Two, two, two answers. One is, one is just empathy and how we speak to each other. If you have a belief set that you know is very core to you and that you want to express, but also can anger or, or divide a, an opposing viewpoint, you need to learn how to express those views in a fucking healthy manner, okay? Unless you are doing it for views and clicks. <laughs> and if you're doing it for views and clicks, like everyone we see, all the pundits, Shapiro, Crowder, AOC, fuck one side or the other. Just to be clear, no one on the show is a woke liberal. No one on the show is even a liberal. The major- we, are, we are moderate to conservative. We're not fighting for people to be fucking, everybody to be censored. That's not what we're doing here. 
People need to learn how to talk to each other in a healthy manner. I learned that in the corporate world. I used to sell crack. I was a piece of was shit. Was that the corporate world? No. <laughs> and I didn't know how to talk to yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And you know, where it get, you know what it got me? Felony charges. My ass beaten. Then I went into a real world environment and learned about chain of command and learned about how to speak to people in a positive manner while also expressing your concerns. The problem is not everyone has that classical training. So you've got a bunch of fucking animals spewing, you fat, ugly, and, 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 and while Tate may have had great takes, unfortunately, they were said in a way that drove views and clicks and not in a way that was positive for conversation. Mm. And end, sto end of story. And that's why the almighty algorithm giveth, the almighty <laughs> algorithm taketh away, and, and occasionally the almighty algorithm drops its mighty sword <laughs> and severs the head of someone it doesn't like. And, you know? That's biblical, Mike. Jack, Susan, and, and you know, uh, and, and Mark Zuck are making those rules. I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but listen, I came up in the underworld. I know that there's people you can rough up. There's people you can buy. And there's people who, are, who call the shots. Yeah. And I ain't fucking with any, I, I like the platform. Right, and the stake. I'm not saying that's okay, but, but hey man, YouTube, you got rules and I'm here to follow them. Yo, yo, we need the platform. In, in, in that way, yeah, we're caught in the matrix. I don't give a fuck. It's great here. The steak, steak I, taste, I, the steak the is delicious. We talk about, I don't want to fucking pump water bro. from the well in my backyard. I don't want to go scream on the table in the courtyard. I want to fucking vibe out with cool people on social media and expand my horizons with things that never could happen 20 years ago because I have an Android device in my hand. I think I use Apple, by the way. I, mean, I was, it was more of like a robotic <laughs> yeah, AI yeah, yeah. tech kind of thing. You have to go, but I want to ask both of you this. Yeah. Is, is there a potential redemption arc for Andrew Tate? I've been asking myself this. Absolutely. Everybody has one. Yeah, I agree. Everybody else. I, I could never say, I could never for a second say otherwise. And I asked you guys the question, but you go first. Go. Because I changed. My life changed. I was in a terrible place and look at me now. So I think everyone deserves a fucking. You guys have uh, been my close card. friends for a long, for a very long time, especially you. You've been almost a decade now. How I react to enemies, each one, and I had one recently that we just talked about. Uh, every single enemy that I look in the eyes, my goal is they don't even know this. It's it's spiritual warfare. When they leave my room or leave my presence, constantly I'm praying for them. No bullshit. And I'm not on some like, oh, here we go. This Christian guy just spewing again. It's it's warfare. I'm trying to get as many people, not fakely, but in real life to be my friend. I know if you have an issue with me, I know at the end of the day, Andrew Tate had to go through something to become Andrew Tate. So take his philosophy, put it here. If I disagree with it, I'm going to slide it right here and I'm going to try to diagnose the problem. If he's sick, where is the medicine? And the medicine is speaking of what I feel like. Now, he could take it or he can't take it. Now, I'm not saying I have the medicine. Everybody come follow me. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> but I'm saying if you have an enemy, the best thing you could do for warfare in your life is get them to be a friend. All of them. Every single one of them. Even if he's like, you look at him and you're like, yo, there's no hope for this guy. There's zero hope for this guy. There's, that's not the case. Every single, this is what I, in movies, when you see a bad villain, this is him. <laughs> I'm going to take over the world. I'm going to use this and destroy. But in real life, a bad person's usually put in a, in a position they don't want to be a part of, or they're uncomfortable, or they make an accidental mistake that leads to a life. Bro, you didn't wake up one day and been like, I'm going to be a drug addict and ruin my whole family's yeah, life. Yeah. You woke up one day and you were like, I'm going to dabble in this. And what I'm saying is at the end, it always starts with a tiny bit of a dabble. Like that girl that fell in love with a guy that is racist. Bro, she didn't look at this guy like, God bless. He's tall, rich, and he hates black people. <laughs> this is great. She didn't start this way. And maybe in racism, I know this, I'll bring up racism. I'll bring up racism in the way that I see it. When 9-11 happened and I was in the third grade, a part of me understood why that white kid in class was mad at me. I got it. A little part of me was like, dude, uh, somebody that looked like me just caused a lot of pain to 2,000 people. I have to have some type of empathy to be like, yo, bro, I get it. I understand why you're talking like this, but it ain't me. I'm this, this, and that. And if you could come at a level of like understanding, yo, this guy hates me because of this reason, there has to be a reason. Empathy. I mean, what he's describing right now is specifically and perfectly defined empathy. Having understanding for and, and a feeling, a potential feeling for what your opposing viewer is feeling is the only way to relate and connect and drive through that division.
That is, I, we, we say this all the time. And the unfortunate part of it is empathy is not something you can go buy at the store. It's not something that someone can teach you. It's not a lesson you can, you can be. That's the hard part about upon. it though. And, 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 and you mentioned this, I think in one of the last Charlemagne. episodes. Charlemagne. Charlemagne is, 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 a, is a lot of empathy, especially if you have trouble understanding and getting there in your head like I did comes from trauma, yeah. right? Some people just haven't been through shit to make them, it's wisdom. To make them it's feel. It's definitely wisdom. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But wisdom could come in many ways, bro. It doesn't. You don't have to go I, through it. You can watch it and I, be like, I agree, Fuck. but every person's different. And there's a quote that, that Max said, I think I've mentioned this before and I like it. It's, um, it's uh, experience is the secret ingredient between knowledge and wisdom. True. So for me, it is that experience. I, I no, you I, have I, no I, the I real trot. No, the I, real. I don't yeah. mean to interrupt you, yeah. but how do you take in the experience? You watch a movie. That's an experience. You sure. watch a play. It's, it's not the same as Charl as Charlemagne said. It's just not the same. When you I, go through a, uh, an event in your life, it's that not the puts same, you into. That doesn't mean you don't have. No, you can you can glean yeah. and you can take learnings from for sure. But when 100%. you go through, and, and here's the other thing with it too, that trauma can also push you in one of one of two ways. So you can either take your trauma, learn from your trauma, become empathetic, become a better person, or you have a villain origin story. My, you know, his mom and dad were killed at the grocery store in front of him. And now mm. what is he? He's a murderer. Mm. He's a, ser a serial mm. killer. Mm. So it's, 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 it's tricky, bro. This is not simple stuff. I think, I think because the main audience and the main people that are talking about this specific situation are such a young group, they like to use absolute and specific statements. Andrew Tate was deplatformed by the man. That's it. This this conversation is so deep. Well, they probably so, thought it was a woman. Yeah, probably. I mean, Susan. <laughs> I guess Susan kicked I, him off. I don't YouTube. know. I, I guess my my. I think I, we're all on the same page. Yeah. But also, just to circle back, the guy that I did forgive, I saw him and I was like, "Hey, bro." Blah, blah, blah. And, we, and I remember looking in his eyes. The guy who called you a terrorist in the third grade. No, no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> the the uh, I had a recent. Um, issue with somebody okay and uh so in real life i went up to him we were at the beach and i was like hey blah, blah. i could see in his eyes he was kind of like what the fuck like why are you why are we good like this you know because yeah. i was really good about it uh short story a few months later and mind you i didn't do this for this reason i'm just giving an example yeah i was stuck in a position where the door was closed on me and there was only one fucking guy that i knew that could open up the door for my problem and i i was like oh we're good now so i like i texted him and i was like hey man do you think you can help me with it 10 minutes later, it was all gone. And it was just a really big learning lesson to me. Yeah, I'm bro. not going to take somebody's bad experience that turned him into an asshole in my point of view, say, fuck this guy. If I forgave him, for me, in the end, you don't know how that could benefit you. So really forgiving somebody and moving on could help you more than it could even help them. For it's sure, really for, for you. sure. I forgave KSI for beating me. And then we started Prime. So I see what you're saying. Yeah, dude. If you want to be <laughs> rich... And successful, forgive and forget. Love, yeah, and I and, and, and just on on like a <laughs> uh, a final cap on it too. Like I don't I don't hate that guy I, at all. You I don't have, hate. I, 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 of course, even, even no, even slightly. I don't. I don't. I don't have any bad feelings towards him whatsoever. He. I hope that you can even in that video he posted, you could already see him starting to to yeah, kind of was, feel like the good news. he was, he was okay. Like, yo, I've pushed a little bit yep. too far. Yep. And, and by the way, I don't even know that he hadn't already started to implement that. I think, I think as, 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 I, as cause, alpha cause, as you can be dog, I'm telling you, there's a toll it takes on your mental health to be at that, war. That he, that he <laughs> thinks he's just a stoic warrior at all times. Yeah. When the whole world's coming down on you, that's not easy, man. Yeah, it's not. It sucks. And and and, and, not and, and, and for that reason, I have empathy for sure. Yeah, for sure. But Gary Vee once told me this, bro. You sleep in the fucking bed you yeah. make and you have to take full accountability for the shit that you do in your life. And he's got to do that. And if he can do that and, and find himself using his gift... G a gift, gift. By bro. the way, Forget. gift, bro. Gift. I mean, he can, he can do, he can do great shit. It's gonna take some time. Yeah, we, we need some, we need some time to unwire and and correct this weird, toxic masculine imbalance that that may have made a little comeback. By the way, dog, you you all know me. I'm down to be a fucking alpha, alpha. male. Yo, protect, provide. A hundred percent through and through, no matter what. But there's a limit to like, what does a true alpha look like, right? Do you need to talk about it? You got to talk about no, how no, cool no, you are. You no, 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 talk about fact, no. No, in do? fact, you don't talk. Or, about or it. you just be a fucking man. Yeah. You be, do you be an actual man. Protect the people you love. Provide for the people you love. 
and 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 have that in your back pocket, knowing that you, knowing that you, you are it already, and and you and don't, I don't need shit something. to validate what you think you have. We fight over labels, and every vertical that it's always a label. That was an alpha male. You call I'm me man. this, or it's you're fighting for that, and it's just like it really it doesn't matter. Words became so much more powerful than it should. Like I I I think words are powerful. They I really, are. Words are powerful. I didn't know that until like my late twenties. I was like, fuck. Words, words are powerful. You use words you are use very powerful. You use certain words that have feeling attached to it or that are charged and 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 you can rattleize but and convince. You can make impressions on people just because of language. Language is is language is what made our species, the Homo sapien sapien, start to develop organizational infrastructure tools, groups, planning, but right? also like, war, war, and, everything, you know everything. Yeah. It comes with both. But I, I, language, words, the way we communicate is like one of the sole reasons that we are the way we are now in 2022. And you're see, and you're seeing this um, wave that I keep talking about uh, on social media, which also includes a subcomponent of it, which is. Why are you guys getting so mad? Like they're just wor like like dude, words hurt people, bro. Words were as you just said, words are very powerful, yeah. extremely powerful, and very hard to take back once you say them. You you can weaponize and language like you would never fucking understand. It it it's been done before in war and propaganda. That's all it is. Like you're you're rallying a country or a, a a subset of people to believe a certain thing just because of how you speak. It's it's everything, bro. The, the what you speak and what you say matters. And you can't just go saying random fucking shit that has a dangerous effect to it. Like that. <laughs> hey, all, and also, come side note, the uh, I think like uh, these kids are also young, and and um, even like I had a guy come up to me last night at the club that was like twenty three, and he's, he he asked me, he's like, um, you know, I'm out of nowhere, he's just standing next to me. It's like two in the morning. He's like, yo, I'm twenty three years old, and I've never hooked up with a girl before. Whoa! And I and I looked over, and I my first thought is, I've never met you before. You didn't even tell me your name. Like he was just in my ear. Yeah. And I think we, I think we like over at like, you, or that's hilarious. You didn't call him a pussy? No, 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 no. I, I said, I, you know what I said to him? Get I said, some, get some tail, bro. No. I, in my mind, maybe I was thinking that, but, it, but in all reality, I said to him, yo, bro, that's completely okay. Like, like that, that's how I am. As of course it's okay. But I, I, let's, I, let's dog on him. I, 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 wait, yes, wait, no, no, no. Hold on, I'm lying to him. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> you should have smacked him in the ring and whispered in the ear. It should have been you in the KSI ring. <laughs> no, but, 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 um, I think that what what a lot of these these younger guys are looking for is a role model that will instruct them the ways to have girls or to get to get girls, right? And I think that was a part of Tate's you know aura was that he was top G. He was the guy that could show you how to do it. But he he just created this really unrealistic Approach. Bro, None people, of your audience okay. has Bugattis. No, they don't talk audience, like him. They don't speak and, like him. But, they, don't, but, they don't have his confidence. But then thank God, bro. But not not the, <laughs> not, the, not, the, not the confidence. But dude, you're not looking for someone who could throw on a Richard Mill or pull up to the club in a Bugatti or fly in a G5 or that charter jet where he was calling me your boyfriend. Like, like. He got a, a, he got a, a charter a, jet. And get, and get <laughs> girls. I promise you, I know so many fucking internet gurus. Logan, you can attest to this. We know so many internet gurus who have made millions of dollars and they wear the Richard Mill and they show up on the G5 to, 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 to Basel, to Art Basel, and they want to come to our table at the club because there's a difference between oozing fucking confidence and being just a cool, nice person and having to create some fake aura for yourself to yeah. get women. It's just, it's just, I, I, just, I get what you're saying. Why I be just, Andrew Tate when you could be us? We're way cooler. <laughs> you come to our not only I know that, that not I'm, only I, that, that is kind of what I we guess can post on Instagram. <laughs> low blow, man. Low yeah. blow. Speaking how, of by low the way, blows. how did like? Oh, yeah, he can't make a comeback. I was just thinking about it. Like, no, no, no. no he not, can yet, come not, back. Yet, not yet. He, 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 yeah, he got. He's gonna. What he'll need to do, truthfully, is a set his beliefs right. At, he needs to go through a little bit of a, a personal reform. I think. It's 2022. We're not fucking cavemen anymore. Women are our equals and partners if you're in a healthy, loving, stable relationship or whatever your relationship is with women. Uh, and then I think you'll have to like lobby, uh, honestly, or like go around and like almost, almost, almost pitch himself. Yeah. Does the donation help? 
So this is what I watched in his video. So he he made he made a donation to I think it was like a woman's foundation or right. something of a significant amount of money. Healthy, like, yeah. Mo, mo, sure. Like a million, one point two million, yeah. I think. Um, and in his video, he was complaining about how it didn't get any headlines, right? Like his his problem with it was that they make headlines on all this negative stuff, but when he does something positive, where's the headline on that, right? And the the issue is you only did something positive because people are coming after you. You can't just throw money at a problem and expect it to go away, which is another, it's a tell that you don't quite understand what's happening here. Oh, he did right? it after he got- a After, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, that's yeah. not gonna work, but like he's like, as, sm as smart yeah. as he is, he really thinks that you just throw $1 million- well, hold on, let me, let me, let's slow down for a second. In the very quick interim post-Tokyo, Wait, that, I did it. I did it. Correct. I didn't complain about not getting a headline. I did it yeah, to do correct. it. I did it because it was the right thing to correct. do. Correct. And I would never have gone, where's my fucking headline? Correct. About the good thing I did, even though I did this cascade of negative shit. You can't do that. You don't understand. And, and, and you knew, maybe not at the time, but you definitely know now that no matter how big that donation was, that was a quarter of a percentage of what you needed to do to grow out of that issue and, and to reform your- and, and, Quarter and, of a percentage. And, yeah. Not, and, it's like nothing. Nothing. And to create a new reformed image of yourself. I, listen, man, I, I hope he- I hope he becomes a better person. I have no, you know, bad feelings towards him or his brother or anyone. And even they want to talk a little shit, poke a little fun. I'm fine with that. But like, you know, I hope he pulls his shit together, learns what he has to do to continue on and, and make Yo, a better place. Yo, how crazy would this be? Oh my God. Oh. Japan happened. Case, I called me out for a fight. I said, yes, I fought him. Tay happened. Got removed from the internet. Kiss, I call, calls him out for a fight. Is <laughs> he, this the beginning of Kate's redemption arc? It, a, a fight through I'll, KSI? And is, KSI, is, is KSI's, KSI's <laughs> entire existence beyond saved, all the things he a does? Saved, just, a saved saved careers. <laughs> Holy he shit. He just brings people back from the <laughs> grave. <laughs> Save careers. Maybe this is, but that's my question to, 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 to JJ. He's like, do you want to fucking platform this guy? Oh, see, here's the Maybe. Thing. We were talking. I don't know. We were talking. said the same shit about you too. I bet the side men were like, do you want to? Oh yeah, maybe Logan, that. You know, hundred percent. The 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 issue with the platforming was this this platforming is a new discussion just as of a week ago because a week ago he had the greatest platform on earth. He was the biggest thing on earth mm. up until his deplatforming, right? But now that question has merit. L l listen, like all those get Tate on messages that we all got for months. It wasn't like we were hitting him up saying come on the show. We could have been the first. Ever. Oh, oh, I forgot Easily. to say that. I forgot to say Easily. it. Yo, yo, like, yeah, yeah, we yeah. Can have, we can have any fucking guests we want. We have one of the largest platforms on the planet. If you combine YouTube views and pod, uh, Spotify listens, we are probably in the top three of the largest programs on the planet. If we want to have a guest on the show, we'll have a guest on the fucking show. The conversation was there. It actually was you because I said, are we going to do this? Are we going to debate them? Look, look, look. That episode would have gotten an amazing amount of views. I took one quick look at this guy and said, this is not my steez. I do not feel like putting this guy on my platform to talk about his fucking bullshit because it is bullshit. And when you poke through it, you realize it's bullshit because not even he can make sense of the bullshit he's saying. Right? He just says shit to, sh says shit to say shit. It got him in trouble. He got bit in the ass. And now he's whining on his fucking couch. I don't in, know in a room. why you would want to do that. Like, I almost want to see him do, like, find a new craft now. Like, like maybe woodworking. Or going back into fighting. Go be a kickboxer. I mean, that'd be Bro, fun. because, dude, why do you want to do that? He's why do you want to? He's getting older. He's out of the game. He's smoking cigars. We'll see what happens. I don't give a fuck. It's good. It, it will be entertaining, though. And by the way, that's why I live my life, to be entertained. Is there anything else? Anything else, Georgie? You have to go? I think, it, uh, yeah, he does. Oh, I'm 30 minutes late. Why don't you get the hell out of here? 21. Huh? You'll, you'll be okay. Why don't you go back to the States? We miss you. We love you. All right. Well, thanks for having me, guys. London's been fun. <laughs> You're not the guest, man. <laughs> thanks so much for What's having your us. Problem, man? Why are you always coming at me, Sorry. dude? Never... Comment down below how Mike always bullies me, bro. Every time. Never... He writes a book to help people, but then he doesn't even help his own best friend. That's kind of fucked up. A little bit of a serious show today. Uh, uh, but there was some stuff in there that I, I, I felt was important. And I like boys only way better than guests. Yeah, they're fun. They're the you best. tell the guests that the next time they come on. Um, yeah, but they just never look at me because they're just facing this way. So you really say, tell the guests they're really cramping our style, dude. By the way, as a unit, I, uh, my, our last guest. Uh, wait, did we put it out yet? Sorry, my we, you, you, you can say whoever you want. Charlemagne. Yeah, yeah. Michael Blackson. Charlemagne.
Do we, do we put that up? Yeah, yeah, my up. brain. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I didn't know how many times I... Hey, hi. All right, yep, you gotta go. I gotta go. For sure. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for listening to this, this episode of Impulsive. Uh, we do love you. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and we will see you next time. Take it easy, fam. Peace.